This is problem number two from International Math Olympiad 2015. Let's call the requirement for the expression AB minus C, where AB and C are positive integer numbers, the first equation. And the requirement for the expression AC minus B, the second equation. And the requirement for the expression BC minus A, the third equation. The exponents in the powers of 2 in their respective right-hand sides can be 0 or positive integer numbers. From that, we can make some obvious observations. First is that AB must be greater than C, AC must be greater than B, and BC must be greater than A. Then none of the numbers AB and C can be equal to 1. Because if we assume that, for example, a equals 1, then assuming that b is less than or equal to c, we will have that 1 times b is less than or equal to c, which contradicts our observation a, that a, b must be greater than c. And the order of a, b, and c in a triple is not important, because any triple either satisfies the condition of this problem or doesn't satisfy it, regardless of the order in which A, B, and C are arranged. Let's start our analysis with the case when all three numbers A, B, and C are equal. So instead of three requirements, we have just one requirement for the triple A, A, A. And that can be written as a squared minus a equals some power of 2. This can be uh, factored as a times a minus 1 equals the same power of 2. And since one of two positive integer numbers a and a minus 1 must be odd, a minus 1 must be equal to 1, because 1 is the only odd power of 2. That forces a to be equal to 2. So there is only one triple of this type when all three numbers are equal is 2, 2, 2. The second case is when two numbers, for example, a and b, are equal, and the third number, c, is greater than a and b. Then the first equation can be written as a squared minus c equals some power of 2. And the second and the third equation can be written as AC minus A equals a power of 2, which can be factored into A and C minus 1. We know from the first observation that A must be at least 2. And since C is greater than A, C minus 1 is also at least 2, which makes both numbers A and C minus 1 even numbers, since they are both powers of 2. From that, it follows that c is an odd number. And then, if we look at the first equation, where a squared is an even number, and c is an odd number, 2 to i must be 1, since this is an odd number, and the only odd power of 2 equals 1. So the value of a is some power of 2, where the exponent m is greater than 1, and c minus 1 is also some power of 2, where exponent n is also greater than 1. If we substitute 2 to power m for a, and 2 to power n plus 1 for c in the first equation, we will easily see that n must be equal to 1, and m must also be equal to 1. This proof is also based on the fact that the only odd power of 2 is equal to 1. Hence, a equals 2 and c equals 3. So the only triple that satisfies case 2 is 2, 2, 3. It's easy to verify that this triple satisfies the condition of this problem. The third case is similar to the second case, but two numbers, for example, b and c, are equal, and the third number, a, is less than b and c. Then the first and second equations can be written as one equation, a, b minus b equals some power of 2, which can be factored into b times a minus 1 equals the same power of 2. 
And the third equation can be written as b squared minus a equals some power of 2. Note that in our two equations, the value of exponent k is greater than the value of exponent i. Uh, it's easy to prove if you simply take the given inequality a is less than b and multiply both sides of this inequality by b and subtract a from both sides you'll get that b squared minus a is greater than ab minus a, which is greater than ab minus b. Hence, 2 to k is greater than 1, and therefore it's even. Let's remember this fact. Now let's look at the first equation. We know that a is at least 2. Since b is greater than a, then b is also not less than 2. And since b equals some power of 2, b is even. If we look at the third equation, we see that b squared is even, 2 to k is even, so number a also must be even, and therefore a minus 1 is odd. If we look again at the first equation, we see that a minus 1 is a power of 2, and since a minus 1 is odd, then a minus 1 must be equal to 1, because 1 is the only power of 2 that is odd. From that, we can conclude that a must be equal to 2. Now we can rewrite our third equation as b squared minus 2 equals 2 to k. Since b is an even number, b squared is multiple of 4, but 2 is not multiple of 4. So the number 2 to k in the right-hand side is even and not multiple of 4. That leaves only one possibility that 2 to k equals 2. From that, it follows that b squared equals 4, so b equals 2, which contradicts our condition of case 3, that b is greater than a, which proves that there are no triples a, b, and c that satisfy case 3. This is the most interesting case when a is less than b and b is less than c we will be able to prove that in this case number a cannot be greater than 3. The key idea of proving it was posted on the math forum by the person with nickname Quasi. In this case we must write all three equations in which their respective powers of 2 increase. i is less than j and j is less than k. This is because in the first equation, two smallest numbers, a and b, are multiplied, and the largest number, c, is subtracted. In the third equation, the two largest numbers, b and c, are multiplied, and the smallest number, a, is subtracted. So k is greater than i. Proving that j is greater than i and less than k is analogous. From that, it follows that only in the first equation, the power of 2 can be equal to 1. That is, i can be equal to 0. Two other exponents, j and k, must be greater than 0, and therefore the powers of 2 are even numbers. Let's first add the corresponding parts of the second and third equations, and then subtract them. Then, after simple algebraic regrouping, we will have two equalities written on the screen. And here we make one critical observation, that the factors in left sides of these two equalities are c minus 1 and c plus 1. Since the difference between these two numbers is 2, these two numbers, c minus 1 and c plus 1, are either both odd or both even. If they're odd, then both b plus a and b minus a are divisible by 2 to power j. And they are also divisible by 2 to j over 2. Remember that 2 to j is an even number, so that 2 to j over 2 is a positive integer. If, on the other hand, c minus 1 and c plus 1 are both even, then one of them divided by 2 must be odd. This is because the formula for even number is 2n, where n can be any natural number from 1 to infinity. And we know that every other natural number is odd. That's why every other even number divided by 2 is odd. 
From that, it follows that either b plus a or b minus a is divisible by 2 to j divided by 2. If, for example, b plus a is divisible by 2 to j over 2, then we can write that b plus a is greater than or equal to 2 to j divided by 2. If it happens to be b minus a, then b plus a is still greater than or equal to 2 to j over 2. If we substitute ac minus b for 2 to j in this inequality, we immediately obtain a very useful inequality. 2a plus 3b is greater than or equal to ac. We will use this inequality more than once for our case 4. For now, we can transform it to the other inequality. a is greater than or equal to b times a minus 3. Based on the fact that a is less than b, a minus 3 factor must be either 0 or negative. Hence, a must be less than or equal to 3. Since our first observation was that a cannot be equal to 1, a can be equal to 2 or 3. Let's start with the case a equals 3. Then we can write our three equations as 3b minus c equals some power of 2, 3c minus b equals some power of 2, and bc minus 3 equals some power of 2. And let's apply the inequality we have proved for case 4. 2a plus 3b is not less than ac. We can rewrite it in case a equals 3 as 2 plus b is not less than c. Also, from the third equation, both b and c must be odd, since 2 to k is even. Then from the first equation, 2 to i is even, since 3b is odd and c is odd. Let's remember that 2 to i is even number. Now let's look at our inequality. 2 plus b is not less than c. Clearly, c is not equal to or less than b, as we know that c is greater than b in case 4. Also, c cannot be equal to b plus 1, because both b and c are odd numbers. So the only case left is that 2 plus b equals c. Now we can substitute b plus 2 for c in the first and second equations. Now elementary algebra helps us to write the formula for the value of number b as the fraction with the nominator power of 2 plus 3 and denominator the same power of 2 minus 1. The only integer value for number b in this case is 5. It's when power of 2 is 2. Obviously, it's the only integer number that can be the value of this fraction. To make it even more obvious, you can express this fraction as the sum of two numbers, integer number 1 and the fraction 4 divided by the same power of 2 minus 1. It's easy to see that for any power of 2 greater than 4, this fraction is less than 1. From this, it follows that the value of c, which is the next consecutive odd number after 5, is 7. This proves that the only triple that satisfies the condition of case 4.1 is 3, 5, 7. This is the second subcase of case 4, when a, the smallest of the three numbers a, b, and c, equals 2. The powers of 2 in the three equations, as always in case 4, increase, so that 2 to i is at least 1, 2 to j is at least 2, and 2 to k is at least 4. From the second equation, b must be an even number, since 2c is even, and 2 to j is also even. Then, from the third equation, c must be odd, because 2 to k is at least 4, which means that it's multiple of 4, and number 2 is not multiple of 4, from which it follows that b times c is not multiple of 4. b is even, so c must be odd. Now, from the first equation, since 2b is even and c is odd, 2 to power i equals 1. 
Now we can write c equals 2b minus 1. And if we substitute 2b minus 1 for c in the second equation, we will get 3b minus 2 equals 2 to j. Since a is at least 2, which is true for all cases in this problem, and b is greater than a, and b is even, then b must be at least 4. And then the expression 3b minus 2 must be at least 10. But because 3b minus 2 equals some power of 2, then 3b minus 2 must be at least 16. If we now substitute 2b minus 1 for c in the third equation, we will get the quadratic polynomial 2b squared minus b minus 2 that must be equal to 2 to k. If we forget for the moment the values of powers of 2 for the linear polynomial 3b minus 2 and the quadratic polynomial and use the formal rules of polynomial division, we will get that the quadratic polynomial times 9 equals a linear polynomial 3b minus 2 times another linear polynomial 6b plus 1 minus 16. And now if we recall that the quadratic polynomial equals 2 to k and it's divisible by 2 to j, which is the value of the linear polynomial 3b minus 2, then we obtain that number 16 is divisible by 3b minus 2, or that 3b minus 2 is not greater than 16. And since we had the previous result that 3b minus 2 equals at least 16, we can conclude that 3b minus 2 equals 16, from which we can obtain that b equals 6. And then c by formula 2b minus 1 equals 11. So the only triple that satisfies this second subcase of case 4 is 2, 6, 11. We have found four triples that satisfy the conditions of this problem. 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 6, 11, and 3, 5, 7. It's easy to verify by inspection that all these four triples indeed satisfy the conditions of this problem.